Hi everybody! How's everybody doing? How y'all doing? Thank you, Muddins, for the follow. I I saw you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you guys for the follow. But guys, day eight. Day eight of the Goldfish Marathon. Damn. This has been going on for a while. And it feels like it went by so quick. Jeez. I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm a bit tired, but that's just because it's early. It's early. But you know, it's it's fine. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun and it's gonna be an amazing time. Because we're back with our life. I think it's beginnings and I can't remember the last word all the time. It's beginning, beginnings and always or forever. I can't quite remember which one it is, but you guys get the point. Back to the dating sim is what we're gonna do. Also, I can't tell if the music is actually playing. On my end, it shows that it is, but I, I really don't know if it is or not. It shows that it is, but I can't hear anything. So hopefully you guys can hear it. If not, then you know what's already scuffed and that's that's the way we roll. That's the way we roll. <laughs> okay. Going on to the game. Right, we back. And I think Yes. So we have two more left. Two more two more moments left. Um so I'll let you guys pick which one which one would you guys like to do today? So then these these two would be the last ones of us being like eight years old, I believe. And then once this summer ends, then we'll move on to like a new stage in life. So we just kind of progress. Alright, run away or sleep over. Hmm. I feel like we could say run away for last. And then maybe do sleep over first. I don't know guys. What do you what do you guys want to see? How about we do sleepover? Let's do sleepover and then we'll save runaway for last. Alright. Okay. Alright, kids, we're done with dinner. Come to the table. Uh, your stomach grumbled right on time, as if it had heard your mom's words. You halted your game and looked over. Mom was almost done setting the table. She was walking around the mahogany wood in the process of putting down cutlery. Mahogany wood? Is that what the table's made out of? I have no idea. Mommy was still in the kitchen, humming under her breath as she turned off the stove and put empty pots in the sink to wash. Ooh. From beside you, Lizzie stirred, uncrossing her legs and standing up. She stretched her arms above her head. Finally, I'm ready to eat. Uh, then she cast a sly glance in your direction. You recognize that look. Oh god, what is that look? I don't know what that look is. W what is that look? <laughs> oh, last one on the table is a rotten egg! Screw you. Screw you. Who cares if we're a rotten egg? We're about to eat. <laughs> I haven't, but it was too late. Lizzie had already bolted towards the kitchen. Rude. Try to catch up to her. You you stayed sitting. You threw a cushion at her. It could mm, I could throw a cushion. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I just stayed sitting. I'm not gonna let her have it. If you didn't get up and race after her, then technically Lizzie would be winning against nobody. She could she could have that kind of victory. Yes. Uh, you cross your arms over your chest, remaining seated, and watched. 
and it was a short distance to the kitchen table. Lizzie managed to get there easily enough, slapping a hand over the wood. Mom moved just before Lizzie could bump into her. With an exasperated sigh, she resumed her work. I win again! I was literally just sitting here. <laughs> you didn't win because you were racing by yourself. Because you cheated. Okay, you won. You didn't bother trying to talk to her about that. Uh, this one. No, I told you we were both racing. I didn't say I was participating, though. You're just too slow. I wasn't racing, and you know it. That sounds like something a rotten egg would say. Okay. Oh. Lizzie grinned, her hands on her hips, uh, then looked over her shoulder. Oh, over your shoulder. Cove, you can be a tiebreaker. Was that a real race that I- Was that a real race that I totally won? Cove was here the entire time? What? You blinked. You hadn't noticed what he had been doing during his little event, which wasn't much. You spotted Cove still on the floor. His legs were crossed beneath him, uh, the arm with the cast resting on his lap. You looked at the two- Oh no, he looked at the two of you with a slight frown. It felt sort of strange to see him here so late. Oh god, what did I skip? Tonight Cove had come to your house for a sleepover. Your mom's ha and his dad had planned it a few days ago. Ooh. Uh, you weren't surprised. You were the one who had asked your moms about it. You were excited when your moms told you the, your, their idea. There was so much to do. It made you quite nervous. Uh, yeah. I would probably have asked and be like, Hey, could he, could he sleep over? Uh, they had told you they would ask Mr. Holden. You looked forward to it since the moment you had found out. He agreed. And he even helped mom search the storage room for a sleeping bag and extra bedding to prepare for his visit. Cove pursed his lips at Lizzie's question, but he didn't respond. Maybe he was planning on ignoring her. Not that Lizzie would make it easy. This wasn't the first time she had asked him to be a referee for one of her sudden races. Come on! Well, did I win or what? No. No. I am tired. I'm tired no. of your races, Lizzie. <laughs> what? I don't think you won. How come? It's not my fault, Goldfish Slow. Cheating's cheating, and cheater cheaters never win. You always pick his side. Oh? Since when? <laughs> Since when? If anything, I'm constantly dragged along in everything that Cove does. What? <laughs> uh, Cove snuck a shy peek at you before answering her. Oh god. Oh god. I pick him and he picks- Ah. <laughs> god damn it. That is- that is honestly kind of sweet. I- mm, Man's a Riz Lord. He knows what he's doing. God. You're a couple of rotten eggs then. Okay. Screw you, Lizzie. That's enough. Nobody here is a loser or a rotten egg. You're each farm fresh. Damn. Amen. Which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Now, listen to mom and come sit at the table for dinner, all three of you. You and Lizzie obeyed, sitting across from each other at the edge of the table. Lizzie blew a raspberry at you when mom turned her back. <laughs> listen, just because it can't see you doesn't mean that they can't hear you. Your parents brought the last of the food, uh, then they took seats further down the table instead of sitting right next to you and Lizzie. Only Cove was left out. He had stood up from his spot on the floor, but he hadn't made a move towards the kitchen. Oh, why? Cove, you can sit too. You, you good? Slowly, he eyed the four seats that were left. Thanks to the new seating arrangement that your parents chose, one free chair was beside you, another next to Lizzie, and the last two were on either side of where your moms were sitting. Uh, sit next to me. You can sit wherever you want to. Stayed quiet. I'll- I'll have him sit by me just because of what he said earlier. <laughs> Oof. 
why wh uh, why am I getting flustered from this? It's like he's just being nice. He's he's just being nice. Um uh Cove's gaze met your gold eyes. You smiled briefly. Uh he grinned back. He walked over, pulled out the chair next to yours, and sat down. You were glad he wanted to sit with you. He just needed to know it was okay. Yeah, that was my thinking. It's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you've never slept at our house, so, you know, I'm gonna try to make you feel as, as welcome as possible. Now that everyone was situated, Mommy began to pass out plates. Okay. Digging kids, I cooked a little bit of everything for dinner tonight. Be sure not to avoid all the veggies. Ugh. Yes, mom. Each person at the table served themselves, except for one. Cove hesitated again. Is he... I, I, do, does, do you not, like... I'm assuming you eat with your dad, right? Yeah? He fidgeted with his hands, clamped on top of his knees. He didn't seem very comfortable doing stuff in somebody else's house. Or it could be that, yeah. It's kind of like nervousness going to somebody else's house for the first time. But he's been here before, I guess just not that late. One dish seemed to have his eye, at least. Which one? Mm. Um, wait. That's pineapple chicken. Wanna try some? Mm. Mm, not really, sorry. Uh, by then, your moms had noted that Cove still had nothing on his plate as well. Do you not like any of the food, honey? Maybe he hasn't tried Hawaiian food before. Oh, wait. Is is Noelani Hawaiian? What? Or are we in just some place in Hawaii? Hawaii. Uh, he hasn't? Wow. Please don't talk with your mouth full, Lizzie. Lizzie swallowed the bite she was eating. Then she spoke again. He should try it now. Uh, she turned to Cove dramatically. Oh, God. Unless you want to shrink, that's what happens if you miss a meal. <laughs> I've never heard that saying ever. Elizabeth, that's not true. You know that. Cove squirmed under all the attention. He fidgeted with a fork between his fingers. I've had some things, just not any like this. Oh, shoot. I knew I should have asked your dad what your favorite foods were. All right, Lonnie, maybe we'll find, uh, maybe he'll find a new favorite today. You weren't so sure about that. Cove didn't look like he was going to be trying the food anytime soon. Uh, your mom's handled this. I think you should try the pineapple chicken. It's yummy. <laughs> Give me your plate. I'll serve you food. Uh, let's do this one yeah we'll, we'll have him try something new because if our mom's pressure him it's like uh you know okay he ultimately trusted your judgment at this at your suggestion cove carefully spooned rice and chicken onto the plate you saw that he took more of the grilled pineapple than any of the vegetables <laughs> you nodded pleased and your mom's let it slide yay eat now eat, child. At first, Cove poked the food. Clearly, he was apprehensive to eat something new, but he took a few ex uh, exploratory bites. Right? It's good, huh? Isn't it? You don't have to keep asking. He still uh, speared more. M he still speared more meat with his fork and ate it, chewing thoughtfully. It's not bad. <laughs> Mommy grinned at his words, satisfied, even though it wasn't exactly a glowing commendation. Lizzie wasn't as mollified. Hmm. You're so weird. Don't be mean to your friend. We're not friends. Oh? Oh god, that is- <laughs> Oh, jeez. Bold, oh. okay. Oh. Mommy floundered in the face of Cove's blunt honesty. You weren't surprised by Cove's declaration. The more you got to know him, the more you realized he wasn't the type of kid to keep his opinions to himself. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, she wasn't easy to get along with all the time, though Cove didn't make much of an effort either. 
You hope Cove thought of you as a friend. Yeah, you two, the two of you were friends, right? You wondered how he felt about you. That still made you nervous about your own relationship with him. At least the two of you were definitely friends. Um, I don't know where we stand. Where exactly do we stand? I want to say that we're friends. Uh, I hoped I hoped he's my friend, but I don't. He hasn't really told me what he thinks of me. Wondered how he feels about you. Either that one or like this one. Probably this one. When you gave Kova a look, he returned a small smile, and that uh, made you feel good, even though you were still unsure. Your mommy looked at mom and only got a shrug. No. Elizabeth, don't call someone weird. There's no such thing as a weird person and a non-weird person. There's just different perspectives. It's not a nice thing to say to someone, anyone, but Pam. Mommy tried to whisper exclusively to mom. Her attempt to make it audible over the sounds of clanking silverware meant you caught the quiet words anyway. They're not friends. He said so. As parents, we can only try, and sometimes we fail. Not all kids will be thick as thieves. Thick as thieves? That's a new phrase. Haven't heard that one. Now less talking, now less talking and more eating, kids. You need to clean up and start winding down for bed soon. But, <laughs> but mom. No buts, we've talked about this. Your bedtime will be moved back in a few years. What? Your, your bedtime will be moved back in a few years. For now, you don't get to stay up as late. That is, that is true. That is very true. Lizzie sulked, muttering under her breath about how it wasn't right. <laughs> you laughed at mom's phrasing. Yeah, I, I don't understand what that phrasing is. I'm gonna laugh at the phrasing. <laughs> you couldn't main you couldn't maintain your snorts. Something the matter, goldfish? <laughs> My mom says no buttons. <laughs> This shouldn't be as funny as it was. <laughs> uh, Lizzie scoffed and rolled her eyes, unimpressed by such crude words. Mommy snickered along with you, however. <laughs> That's right, no butts allowed here. You'll have to get rid of yours. Yo. <laughs> no, I need it. Please. How will I ever go to the bathroom again? How, how does one do that? Please. I need it. The two of you continue to chuckle and Cove even cracked a smile. Children. I'm surrounded by children. Yes, I am a child. I am eight. The rest of dinner passed uh, by uneventfully. Cove was silent for most of it, even though you nudged him and he tried to get him to talk. All too soon, the table was cleared. The games in the living room were put away and you were all steered to your bedrooms. Mom finished tucking you in and kissed your brow just as mommy poked her head in the room. All ready for the lights off, you two? You were lying comfortably in your bed. The blanket uh, hiked up under your armpits. You could kick it off later if you got too hot. Mom had set up the sleeping bag on the floor for Cove just beside your bed. He had already wiggled inside. You nodded for the both of you in response to mommy's question. Good night. Perfect. I'll go say good night to Lizzie then. Uh, mom tweaked your no what is it? Tweaked your nose? What does that even mean? Chuckled and then squawked in annoyance and left. Um, mommy took her place, sitting on the edge of your bed. Sweet dreams. Aww, thank you. She pressed a soft kiss on your forehead. You giggled as strands of her hair fell forward and tickled you. Mommy smiled down affectionately at you, then moved her attention to Cove, who watched from his spot on the floor. Do you need anything before falling asleep, honey? What does your dad do? Uh, sometimes, sometimes he picks me up and lifts me really high and shakes his hands like we're gonna, like he's gonna let go, but he catches me again. <laughs> he keeps doing that until sometimes he does drop me on my bed, or other times he lowers me down and we pretend like I'm crashing. Ah. 
Cove had some pretty excited uh, had become pretty excited when talking about the nightly ritual he and his dad shared. He seemed to realize how animated he was, um, and bashfully quieted. Aww, but I don't want to do that here. Oh, how fun! Though I think you're right. That might not be a good idea to do that tonight. The sleeping bag might not be a soft enough landing. Hmm. If there's anything else, you can always ask me or Goldfish as Goldfish's other mom. But I'm the nicer one. Just don't tell her that. <laughs> she laughed good na uh, naturedly and stood up. Take care. Sleep well, Cove. Night. Sleeping, uh, leaning against the door jab, jam, door jam, like door frame. She rested a hand on the light switch and looked at, looked to you. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug, bed, bed uh, I can talk, wow. Don't let the bed bugs bite. With the last smile, mommy turned off the lights and stepped out, closing the bedroom door behind her. You listened to her footsteps fade as she walked down, uh, the hallway. But even as the sound vanished, your eyes stayed open. It was so exciting to have Cove spending the night. You were happy that Cove was spending the night, but you couldn't shake the conversation from earlier at the dinner table. Which one? Uh, Kovat said, oh yeah, Kovat said that he and Lizzie weren't friends, but that wasn't, that wasn't the part that was bothering you. You couldn't stop wondering how he really felt about you. Yes, I kind of do want to know. D are we friends? Do you consider me a friend? I, I am going to ask. Kov, yeah. Are we friends? Cove didn't speak for a few moments, and you wondered if you'd startled him with the question. The longer the silence stretched, the more uneasy you felt about his impending answer. Do you think we're friends? You wrinkled your nose at the question, being redirected back at you. The way Cove had asked it made you think that maybe he hadn't even questioned it before, and now more than ever you wondered if you should have kept quiet instead. Mmm... Yeah, we're friends. We're best friends. I don't know. Not not really. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you decide. Um, we're best friends. I want to say we're best friends. We've gone through we've gone through a lot of stuff together, and honestly, I think I think we're best friends. We're best friends. You heard Cove shuffle around in a sleeping bag, and you looked up um, at the slivers of light cast upon your ceiling. As you waited for him to say something. Well, there isn't somebody else it could be. Oh, come on, don't say that. I'm putting my heart out over here for you and be like, hey, we're best friends. You're just gonna be like, oh, nope, there's no other person in this town that it could be. Wow, alright. So I guess we are best friends. You chuckled, that answer is just like him. Sure, I guess. Only because there isn't anyone else? No. <laughs> God! <laughs> I need a compilation of every time I react a certain way and the game just predicts it and, and we end up saying the same thing. <laughs> uh, and then you let your eyes drift close. Please, that it was settled. Okay, silence. Am I going to sleep now? You, uh, you started when Cove sighed deeply. You turned your head to look in his direction. In the dark, you could see you could only see a faint outline of a lump under the covers. Cove? Wait, did he get in bed with me? Hold on. You you, you started when started or startled? You started when Cove sighed deeply. You turned your head to look in his direction. In the dark, you could only see a faint outline of lump, of a lump under the covers. Under my covers or his in the sleeping bag? Cove? Hmm. Oh no, he's still in his sleeping bag. Okay. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> could you be less loud? Could you be quieter, please? No. What's wrong? I can't sleep. Why not? He shifted, or at least you thought he did. You couldn't see anything since your eyes were still adjusting to the dark. 
but you heard his sleeping bag rustle. I want to be in my bed. Oh. Uh, Cove sat up. Your eyes had gotten used to the low level, low light level, so you could see him better. He got out of his sleeping bag, wobbled towards your bedside, and pulled open the top drawer. What is it? I'm getting my glasses. You sat up too, watching as he reached inside. He paused for a second, then pulled his hand out. Instead of his glasses, though, he was holding a book. Is that my diary? Do I have a diary? Cove turned it around in his hands, trying to figure out the proper orientation for it. You, you knew even without reading the title which one it was. That was one of your mom's... That was one your moms would read to you. It was special. <laughs> what are you doing with that? I thought you were looking for your glasses. Careful, that's mine. Um, I thought you were looking for your glasses. I was. Then I felt this. It looks cool. The compliment he afforded um, your special book had you grinning. Your confusion forgotten. It is really cool. Oh yeah? What is it about? It's a story about a squire who wants to become a knight and there's magic. Does it have mermaids? Do you like mermaids? Are you like a mermaid man? A mermaid man? Merman? Are you? A lot of people thought you were a mermaid. I wouldn't be surprised if you were. Um, no, but... I love the main character because the squire is real brave and funny. It has cool pictures. Some of them even take up the whole page. Mommy reads it to me. She uses different characters, different voices for each character. There's a dragon in it and crazy things happen. Uh, first one. I really like reading. I like character analyzation. But they're stuck working for this knight who's rude to them. Nobody believes they can be a knight, but that doesn't stop the squire. So they can. So they go on an adventure to show the king they're worthy. Cove looked excited by your words. He flipped the book over and focused at the backside summary. He must be pretty interested in it. You were reminded of the hours you'd spent hearing the tales. No matter how many times you read it or had it read to you, you were still entertained by the story and pictures in inside. You glanced out the window. The moon was high in the sky. It was definitely the time when you were supposed to be asleep. Uh, you couldn't... You could... You just... Oh, uh, words... You couldn't keep staying up. You wanted to read the book with Cove. I'm gonna read it with Cove. Screw it. You climbed out of bed and padded over to the side table. You opened it and rummaged around, pushing aside stuffed toys and crayons. Uh, Cove called out to you in a confused whisper. Um... What are you doing? You'll see. You let out a quiet cry of victory when you found what you were looking for. You jumped back into the bed before any hidden boogeyman could catch you unaware. Cove continued to watch as you wiggled your way underneath the blanket you discarded earlier. You pulled it up over your head. What? Come on, check it out. Bring the book too. After a minute, the bed dipped as Cove got on it. Um, then the blanket shifted. You fiddled with the flashlight in your grip, feeling for the switch. Oh god, that's bright. With a click, the small space flooded with the bright light. Cove sputtered, putting a hand up to shield himself from the beam. Move it somewhere else. Sorry. You tilted the flashlight so it was shining down towards the floor of your blanket cave and away from Cove's sensitive eyes. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Now we can read, and my moms won't know. Uh, yeah. I do this all the time. Yeah, I would do this all the time. I'd be the type of person to do this all the time. When mom or mommy checks on me, I have to hide everything under the blanket, but I haven't been caught before. Do you want to try? Cove nodded, pl uh, pleased with the straightforward response. You placed the book between you and flipped it open to the first page. Meanwhile, he laid down on his belly and shuffled closer, picking up the flashlight to shine it on the pages. His face was illuminated with a warm glow. You mirrored his position, leaning in so you could see uh, the book better. 
Your forehead's nearly brushed until you shuffled back a com uh, comfortable distance. Di oh, wow. A comfortable distance. You wanted the story to be narrated. You thought it was best to take turns reading the book silently. You flipped through the pages to show Cove cool pictures. No. Um... Uh, normally I would say narrated but I think it might be best to do it silently simply because it's late at night here you turn the book around so it was right um, so it was right side up for Cove you can read a page then I'll read it and we can keep switching like that he nodded with a bit of hesitance Cove tugged the book closer towards him then he began to read. You saw his mouth form the words as he whispered them underneath his breath, inaudible to you. After some time, he was finished reading the page. He took a few moments to admire the picture covering half the page, then slid the book back to you. Okay. Your turn. You continued this way until you were a quarter way into the tale. Uh, the next time it was Cove's turn, you yawned, resting your chin on top of your crossed arms. Idly, you studied Cove. His eyes were following the text, a soft smile lighting, lighting up his features. A lock of his hair fell into his field of vision, but he gave it no notice. He was lost in the story. You started when Cove um, caught you watching him. He raised a questioning eyebrow. What? <laughs> Nothing. Cove shot you a strange look, but he went back to the book. You did too, even as your eyelids eyelids started to droop. When your eyes opened again, your bedroom was pitch black and silent. Your head was smushed in your pillow, your pajamas were sticking to you, and your mouth was dry. <laughs> Slowly, you raised yourself onto your elbows. You yawned the back of your throat, twi uh, twinging? Twinging, as you do. You rolled onto your side to sit up in bed, planning to get water from your kitchen. When you saw a dark shape towering up above you, oh? You froze, then you remembered you weren't alone in your room tonight. Oh god. Cove, is that you? Yeah. Yeah. You shifted and felt something cylindrical press against your thigh. You fumbled for it. The familiar weight of the flashlight pressed into your palm. You turned it on. Cove blinked at you, looked exhausted. Looking exhausted, he was in his normal clothes again, shoes and everything. His pajama pants were left on the floor, abandoned. His sleeping bag was in a similar state. What is it? I can't sleep. I keep waking up. Did you have a bad dream? He shook his head from side to side. No, just can't sleep. It's weird here. You frowned. You've, you'd helped your mom's redecorated only a few, a few months back. I like my room. It's not that it's bad, I just always sleep in my bed, in my room. Um, that made things a little clearer. It wasn't anything that you'd done. Cove couldn't sleep in a new place. You wondered how long it took for Cove's bedroom in his new house to not be weird to him. Probably a while. That's true. You can't sleep in, like, somebody else's room. Then moving might have been quite difficult for him. I need water, Brig. Cool. All right. I'm gonna go. Where are you gonna go? Where are you going? What? Uh, that shook off the last of your doziness. He was going to walk outside back to his own house at this time of night, all by himself? He nodded. He noted your shocked expression and looked at you with resolve. My dad will let me in, and I've gone outside late before, and I have to go. I mean, you don't... You don't have to. You don't have to. Or I'll go with you. It wouldn't even be a sleepover if Cove left in the middle of the night. It was called a sleepover for a reason. Cove looked frustrated. Though you got the feeling it wasn't at you specifically. Yes, I do. Uh, you were at a stalemate. Frowning to yourself, you studied his sleeping bag. 
Was there a way you could make him more comfortable? Mm, let him sleep on the bed. I'll take the sleeping bag. If Cove didn't like how weird your room was, maybe he could f he would feel better if he had something more familiar nearby. Oh. You went to your bed and grabbed your blanket. Then you spread it over the floor beside Cove's sleeping bag. He watched as you did, blinking. You're sleeping on the floor? Yeah, next to you. Mm. Uh, hopefully that'll help you sleep easier. Mm. Is that okay? Uh-huh. I honestly do not mind. You spied a small smile playing on his lips. We can try it. Yes. But if it doesn't work, I want to go home still. I get it. You grabbed your pillow and a few plush toys for good measure as Cove picked up his pajama bottoms and folded them, then set them aside. You tossed the items in your hands onto the blanket, completing your task. The two of you stood and looked down at your handiwork. Is it, a is it technically a nest or something? Are you going to change it to your pajamas? No, I can sleep like this. There wasn't anything else left to say. In unison, you both lay down side by side. Ko put his glasses aside and got into his sleeping bag. You made yourself as comfortable as you could, wrapped in the fuzzy blanket. The floor was hard and, unfor and unforgiving against your back. Not at, not at all as comfy as your bed, but you didn't mind it much. You had fallen asleep you had fallen asleep on the floor before. What mattered was if it helped. You swiveled your head to observe him. Is it better? He poked his uh he poked the top of his face out of the sleeping bag and mumbled bashfully. I don't know. I have to sleep first. I can't tell if I can now. You couldn't help but be disappointed by the answer. Just take my bed, man. Take my bed. Promise to wake me up if you want to go. Cove looked confused by the by the request, but he nodded anyway. Okay. Sure. You smiled. At least he wouldn't disappear without knowing, without you knowing. You settled in for bed on the ground, uh, closing your eyes and waiting waiting for sleep to come. You wanted to give Cove a chance to get comfortable. Surprisingly, he decided to keep talking. This is my first sleepover. Oh, this was my sleep first sleepover. Is, I guess. You opened your eyes to see him staring up at the ceiling, his seafoam hair spread out around his head like he'd just gotten shocked. Really? I've had sleepovers before. Sometimes I'll go to friends' houses. Shiloh slept over a few times too, and other stuff. Cove remained quiet. The silence stretched between you, but it didn't feel awkward right now. You didn't feel the need to break it immediately. How was it? Or is it? Hmm. It's not bad. I liked reading your book. You did? I kind of thought you weren't having fun, but didn't really say anything that you were when you were eating. I didn't know what to say. Oh. Uh, you were the one who didn't know what to say. You just laid there. And so did Cove, for what felt like a long time. Hey, Cove. There was no answer. You leaned on your elbow to see Cove's eyes closed. His lashes fanned over the apples of his cheeks. His chest raised and lowered with every inhale and exhale. He was fast asleep. You smiled to yourself. Good night. You rested on your back and closed your eyes. Soon enough, you were lulled to sleep by the gentle sound of Cove's breathing. The next morning, you were woken by the sound of Mom's voice and a soft shake on your shoulder. Goldfish, wake up. It's time to get up and at him. Why do we have to wake up early for a sleepover? Who wakes up early for a sleepover? I would like to know. Please. The sun was peeking through the curtains and you rubbed your eyes and as they adjusted to the new light. Honestly, don't wake me up early at sleepovers. Let me sleep. Just, just let me sleep. I remember at one point I had a sleepover and it was like... <laughs> we didn't we didn't end up sleeping until like 5 a.m. to like 5 a.m. and then we went to bed and we woke up at 8 we woke up at 8 a.m. so it was like three hours of sleep and at first we felt fine at first we felt completely fine and then it just hit us 
throughout during the rest of the day we're just like oh god we, we can't handle this anymore we're too tired <laughs> Is everything okay down there? You blinked at mom for a moment, confused, remembering you had slept down here on the floor next to Cove. He was just waking up, yawning loudly, his hand lightly hit your face as he stretched out. <laughs> when you moved away, you groaned a little at the pain in your shoulder from having slept on the hard ground. It definitely wasn't as comfortable as your cozy bed, that's for sure. Cove wasn't feeling good, so I stayed with him. You mumbled uh, and glanced at Cove, who rubbed his eyes sleepily. He didn't say anything. Still, you were glad he decided to stay for the night in the end. When you looked at Mom next, she was smiling at you both. Mommy was standing in the doorway behind her, doing the same thing. Alright kids, we'll be downstairs making breakfast. Don't take too long coming down. She said something to Mommy on her way out that made the two of them giggle. Did you sleep okay? You stood up and stretched your legs, watching Ko fumble with the bedside drawer and pulling out his glasses. Um, I think so. He had been able to relax when it was just the two of you in the night. Now that a new day had come, he gave the impression of feeling out of place again. But the smile on his face had a gentle light. Thanks, Goldfish. No problem, bud. You're welcome. Even if it wasn't the- if, even- oh god. Even if it couldn't be a perfect time, it was worth it. Cove didn't stay for breakfast. He really- he was ready to go at that point. Mom uh, called to make sure Mr. Holden was up before Cove went home. He gave you a small wave as he left, thanking your moms- thanking your moms for letting him stay before he disappeared through the front door. Honestly, I don't think he would have cared if his dad was awake or not. He was willing to go in the middle of the night. You smiled at the sight. Ko's very first sleepover had come to an end. Yay. Awesome. Well, that leaves Runaway, but we'll save that one for next time. And then after we do this last one, then, you know, this whole first step is going to be over. And then summer will end and we will grow up. God. Time flies. It's we've done like episode after episode after episode, or I guess they're moments, aren't they? Moment after moment after moment. And now we're gonna be growing up soon. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, regardless, I hope you guys all had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. But that's gonna be it for today. Day eight. We have two more days two more days two more days of the great goldfish marathon and tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be another csmp stream however on thursday we're gonna be playing gartic phone and Gar this is gonna be i think one of my biggest lobbies yet maybe roughly so i think it might be about the same size as the among us stream was but it's gonna be loads of fun and hopefully you guys can come watch as well. But for now, that's going to be all for today. And I hope I get to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.